Brad here, Buzz TV. It's another fun day. We have a web view coming all the way from Cape Town, South Africa. Terminatrix, how are you guys doing today? Good, thank you. Great Perfect. Oh, I love today. It's a nice day, and uh, I beat the rain, so I'm not going to complain. Before we get this rolling hard, why don't you guys introduce yourselves, tell the people out there that don't know you who you are and what you do with the band. Um, okay, my name is Sonia, and I am the vocalist of the band. I'm Paul. I'm the, um, well, I guess I write the songs and I record guitars and bass guitar, but live I uh, play bass guitar and do backing vocals. Very nice. So how long has this band been together? We know you've been around for actually quite a while. Yeah, well, we've been going since um, 2002. Um, when we started off basically just Paul and, and, and myself and then um, for our first show we recruited some, some of our friends to be in the band. And the, the lineup has always been sort of a configuration of the same people. Yeah, it's been almost, yeah, we're not in our 13th year and yeah, time, time flies. Um, <laughs> but the, our, our current lineup has been the same since 2008. Myself and Sonia and Patrick on guitar and Ronnie on drums, live drums. You know, that's a great thing, and let alone 13 years for anything, you know, staying together in this business in this day and age. That's quite an accomplishment, so congratulations on that. Now, for those of you that don't know, we were turned on to the band and fell in love with them instantly. It's really tough in this day and age when you're trying to classify someone or put people in a genre or a style. Because I just look at it as, this, these guys kick ass. Um, and that's really all that needs to be said. You know, a, a classification or a style is kind of a joke to me. Now, being in South Africa, this uh, is something. Is there actually a fan base there? Is there, you know, you know for our style of music in general, rock and roll? I think um, the, in, in Cape Town, there's a, there's a small... Um, because Cape Town is small, so there's like a relatively small um, fan base here. We found in Johannesburg that we do have more fans than what we thought we have, and we actually do have quite a few fans throughout the country, but um, Cape Town's alternative scene generally is, is, is unfortunately a bit small. Yeah, but South Africa's alternative scene is, is pretty tiny compared to the rest of the world, Europe, or, or where you guys are at. Um, and yeah, it's it's you just need to dig to try and find these people and trying to turn them onto different music. Just anything alternative is it's very hard to get coverage com in, in via commercial media. Obviously, as I'm sure the same would be anywhere else. But I think here it's it is particularly difficult just because it's 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 not it's not the kind of music that people really really push or, or go for, yes. But, I mean, we do it because we love it, and that's not a problem for us. If there are two people that like it, that's perfect. Well, you know, it, it's weird because we have the same issue here. It, it's In America, the whole music scene has really gotten weird and different. Um, the record companies don't support bands like they did. The la you know, so you don't have label support. Bands really aren't making money. Tour touring is just so oversaturated where everybody's on the road trying to make money. It's just a really tough go of it. Um, now, with you guys there, is the playing a lot of venues to play, or is it more or less that the band's doing a lot of shows out of the country? I think um, the same here. We, we, you, need to, you need to really play live shows to make money because we, you essentially end up making money by selling your merchandise, so selling your, your album, selling your t-shirts and your stuff. Um, unfortunately, I, I re in South Africa, there's, if you accumulate the country, yes, there's, there's nice venues, um, but it's expensive to travel here, and it's expensive to fly four or five people to Johannesburg every second weekend, so you are limited to only a few venues, unfortunately. Yeah, in, in Cape Town, there are probably probably three, four venues you can play um, within, say, about a, a 30 kilometer radius. Um, and in Johannesburg, I'd say there's probably also about five or so. I could be wrong, but um, except for recently, um, these guys put up, uh, they started this uh, festival called Witch Fest. And so they just, once a year, they're going to bring 
a whole bunch of South African bands and a whole bunch of international bands together. That's where we played over Easter. And that was great. It was the place was packed and yeah, people really, really got behind it in 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 a big way. Except when they had zero sponsors, so it was completely. I mean, that that's what we've been doing since we started. It's all been indie and just you know, you fund your own stuff, you do it in your own time, whichever way you can, and you do it the best the best you can. Yeah, the 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 cool thing about that though is that you um you've got your artistic freedom. No one has you don't have to take anyone's instructions on how you're going to do things. And um, we've sort of invested, where we invest our money is in uh, music videos. So um, so that we, we've, we've got further reach with music videos. Um, yeah, so once we yeah. record an album, we try to get as many music videos from there as possible. Uh, my aim is always to do a video for each song, but obviously that's not possible. But you can always always gun for that and, and, and try. But, uh, you know, I mean, just because then once once the album is about a year old, you can still, if you still have videos coming out, then just people get get a, they get a new interest in it. If they see a new video for a song, they might not know the song, they might not know the band. They might come across the video via you guys or, you know, just get shared somewhere by someone. And, you know, just, just we just need to keep the momentum going and keep uh, keep spreading the word, I guess. Well, you know, and it's also thinking outside the box. It's what I've talked to a lot of people about, especially in this day and age. It's being creative in your marketing, how you go about getting the product out there because of the new age. We, you know, we stumbled upon a band, and I've said this in multiple interviews. It's, you know, they blew me away because they were so outside of the box with their thinking. Um, I saw it was a social media post. Uh, bass player wants to sell a million units of their new album selling it for a dollar online streaming only. Read the thing and the guy's like, yeah, we want to try to sell a million units. And thinking about it, I'm going, well, let's see. Genius. Um, because whatever your initial cost is, you make your album. Selling it online for, you know, to stream it, there's a zero cost in it. It's a program. So it costs you no money. I look at it this way. I bought the album. Um, I, you know, it's. I think there's four, you know, about three or four tracks that are really good on it. The rest is is, is stuff on it. But again, kids will buy a track for a dollar. So getting a whole album for a dollar, I thought was genius because they only did it on internet. If you wanted a hard copy, it's full price. But again, it costs them nothing. It's a, it's an automatic program. They do nothing, and the whole dollar is goes to the band versus selling a single through whoever you're getting change if you're lucky and and, and just think if you're lucky just say you only sell 10,000 copies at a dollar the band still made 10 grand and that's probably more than what you'd make doing it through some other service so I always give those guys kudos because they really thought outside of the box on that one and today that's what it's all about how you reach people um, with everything else now shifting gears a little bit let's talk about the music Latest CD that the band has. I like it. Um, I think it's a really driving product. Let's talk about it. You know, the writing and recording process. Was this a quick album to do, or was it something that you guys really took a while? No, no, it took us a while. Um, after our, our debut album, we recorded in 2008. And then from there, we took some time to get um, the entire album remixed by uh, local remixes and some international remixers as well and that carried on until 2011 um, but then you know it was a case of we just eventually we just it was just a case of we really had to do some we have to record a new album now yeah that was but so that was about 2012 and um, we just needed to to step it up from from our very first album because uh, the first one we did our own on our own but we just went to a, a decent studio to have it mixed uh, with a friend of ours Fuzzy, uh, he's got a studio in Cape Town, uh, Sound and Motion Studios. Um, but you know, that's that's the thing. Just like with music videos, with the recording process, um, you know, you have to tap into your friends and connections to try and uh, cut costs as much as possible because it's an expensive thing, and we want to get the best product um, at the at the lowest price. Um, so yeah, we we a friend of ours, Theo Kras, um, he was in a band, Springbok Nude Girls and a band Kubis that I played drums for as well for a couple of years. He's got a very nice studio here in Belleville in Cape Town. 
Um, so we got all our songs together, went to chat with him because he's, he's, he's been recording some, some high profile South African artists, bands like the Parlo Tones and Prime Circle, mainly rock, hard rock and pop bands. But he's a good friend of ours and we, and we know that he, he has a, a kind of a metal sensibility. Never mind the fact that he's got a great studio with more, 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 more toys than we could ever dream of. Um, so we, we chatted with him and he, he cut us a deal and said, cool, we can do it with him, do a, a, a 10 song album. And we threw a, roomie, a remix on there as well. But it was just a case of getting all our songs together, doing lots of pre-production, recorded a lot of the, a lot of the, the, the tracks ourselves, a lot of the programming, um, some vocals we recorded ourselves, guitars, bass. And then we took it to his studio and just threw it in the pot and started messing around with it, re-recorded extra bits and pieces, added live drums on top of it, because the first album was strictly programmed drums. And besides the fact that we wanted our, our, our drummer, Ronnie, to be part of the recording process as well, just to add a more organic, live, analog feel to it, the drums were also recorded analog onto two-inch tape. Nice. Um, so it was a nice mixture of digital and analog and just, you know, a, a blend to give it that industrial metal feel without it. You know, we also didn't want to, we didn't want to go out of a way to make it too heavy because we didn't want to be the heaviest band in the world. There are lots of other bands that they've done that and they are doing that. So we just wanted to get the best out of our songs and we knew Theo could help us by co-producing it with us. You know, and yeah. I love the stuff because, as you're right, it's not too heavy, but it's heavy. Um, and you guys have a very unique sound. It's not like we listen to the band and go, oh, that sounds like whoever, which to me is always death. If, you know, if, if someone says, I sound like somebody else, that's the time to completely change your sound. Um, but you guys <laughs> have a really great, unique sound. Now, Thanks. If, I, if they wanted to buy the album right now, where do they get it? Bandcamp, they can get, they can download it at Bandcamp, or they can order uh, physical CD copies at Bandcamp. Um, it's also on iTunes, at CD Baby. Um, um, isn't it on uh, iTunes and Amazon? Amazon MP3, yeah, yeah it's, it's at all, all, all the major download stores, but then physical copies and of our entire catalog and DVDs, T-shirts, everything can be ordered from Bandcamp as well. Now, what about the band's personal website? Can we get stuff there? Yeah, no, there's a there's a merch uh, link there, but that pretty much passes you onto onto Bandcamp. Or That's okay. We just... we want them to go to your website. Then they then they learn about the band. Then they can go to Bandcamp and buy the music. Yeah. So let's yeah. lay that on them. What is the band's website? Terminatrix.com with a Y X at the end, not an I X. There you the, go. That's now, if you're watching this via your phone, yeah. go ahead. Sorry, good way to remember the name is think of Terminator and Dominatrix and you splice the two and you've got Terminatrix. <laughs> but remember the YX at the end. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll, you'll, I think you might end up at some, uh, some German fetish club website if yeah. you go to Terminatrix with an IX. Well, you, you know what? Not... If you do end up there, maybe you should get a hold of him and say, hey, you know, uh, a lot of our traffic's going to you guys. Want to give us a little corner spot so they can link back to us in the end? Um, we'll do we'll do the same for you. <laughs> that, that's actually the, the, one of the reasons we, we put the Y at the end because um, around 2003 there were so many names that popped up Terminatrix with an I. We initially had it with an I X, and um, including the, the the Terminator Three, they referred to the female uh, cyborg as the a Terminatrix. So we just changed that, and then obviously, I mean. We're the only ones with the spelling, so we can get the .com site, and if you type in Terminatrix with a Y, we're the only thing that pops up. If you type in Terminatrix with an I, you'll get a list of, I think there's a manga movie, there's a DJ with the name, there's just so, so many different Terminatrixes, but yeah, we're the one with a Y. And again, if you're watching it from the iPhone or Android app, go to the Buzz TV site. Right down there is going to be a link to their website, to all the other places you can get the music, but most important to the band's website. So you click that little link down there and it'll send you right to them. Um, and then that's all on you if you want to go click an eye and go to some German fetish site afterwards. But, you know, we don't take anything, uh, hold anything for anyone's personal life choices. Now, 
I guess uh, here's a question: Are you guys lucky enough to any have any sponsorships? Anyone in the band sponsored by anyone we want to give love to? Well, we we have a couple of local guys that back us. Uh, uh, Paul Bothner Music. It's a music store that we've been associated with for quite a few years. They always help us out, give us good deals. Sometimes give us freebies when we play shows. They often just supply us with a back line. So they're always there when we need them. Uh, New Rock. Uh, New, New Rock Boots. Which? In Spain? Yes. Oh, um, New Rock Boots in Spain. Killer Boots. <laughs> um, wildfire Tattoos and Body Piercing. Uh, we might not look like it, but we've got a few tattoos hiding here and there and some piercings. So it's, uh, when we need that, we chat with them and they're always, uh, when we need to do some kind of a giveaway, they're always happy to give us vouchers and stuff to do that. Ah, oh, that's great. You know, so, uh, so where are they exactly in South Africa? Um, Wildfire, they've got a few branches. The, the tattoo store is in Long Street in Cape Town and the body piercing store is in... Um, Canal Walk. Canal Walk Mall. It's uh, it's one of the big malls yeah. in Cape Town. Cape Townians know it well. <laughs> Canal Walk, Bill. That is. There you go. So if you're there, wildfire. Thank you guys. You take care of them. Let alone that they help you out with giveaways. So mad, mad love to those people because that's a great thing that they do. Um, we love people that definitely can help others out and Absolutely. and see it. So we definitely love that one. So here's a question for you. What might we have left out? that they need to know about the band. If, if, if you heard snoring, it's because over here is uh. Uh, uh, Zoltan is sleeping on my lap. Yeah. Uh, Chihuahua. There we go. Uh-oh. There you go. Mine, I have... In, 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 in case you thought it was me sn yeah. making snorry sounds, it's, uh, it's actually a dog sitting on my lap. Oh, well, that's yeah. good because... Uh, that would have been a good trick. Eyes wide open, speaking and snoring. Um, yes, yes. No, no, um, we, we love animals and we hate it when people, uh, yeah. yeah. Believe Don't me. Yeah, yeah, I'm the same way. Let's see, I have a 165-pound Tressa Canario asleep over there. Um, <laughs> I think I have a, about an 11-week-old pup that's sleeping over there. And a cat oh. asleep over here. And a cat asleep over there. And third cat somewhere. So I'm like you, I'm an animal lover, and when I see ugly stories, it, you know, it, it, it tends to ruin my day. Um, so. But um, we, can, we can, can we mention the... We can mention anything. We can, we, yeah, we, we've we, got something lined up with um, Fangoria. So let's talk there. about that. Yeah, hmm. um, but Paul knows a little bit yeah, more um, about so that. Basically, um, I've, um, I've, well, we, we all do different things besides playing the band because we have to. Exactly. And one of the things we do is I, uh, um, I write movie and music related reviews and articles and I've, I've done some writing for Fangoria magazine and I chatted with the editor and they have a, they have a, 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 a digital download label, uh, Fangoria Music, Music, S-I-C-K, um, and they mainly do sort of odd, interesting music, like movie soundtracks and that kind of thing. Um, so we, we chatted with them and we'll be doing, uh, for the first time, it'll be a digital, it'll be, it'll be exclusive to them, this specific compilation from across our three albums. So it'll be, it'll be at a very, very affordable price. So if people want to, to check us out, that'll probably be in June. I think we'll be mm. releasing that. You know what? We'll keep um, in touch and when you do, we'll make yeah. sure we post it and let, let everyone know about it as well. That's yes, and then we're also planning. We've got a we've got a, a a music video project in the pipeline as well. Um, it's probably for a few, but a few, yeah. but but the one immediate one we're probably planning on having ready, hopefully end of June. So we can we can definitely send that your way as well. Oh, we'll definitely love to plug that one because um, we love pushing stuff and making sure that that people see stuff they might not have seen. And again, like um, me, we were turned on to the band and love it, so we can't wait to turn you on to, uh, you know, as many as we can, and hopefully we'll get the cool. same feeling. That's, that's great. Thanks so much. But also what, we, what we'll be doing in June and July, um, coincidentally, two different promoters did this at the same time, and it's something that we've, we've been wanting to check out for a while, is to do all ages shows. Because, you know, we always play, you know, you play after hours in a bar or a club where, where kids can't go, and, you know, when's the 
that the best way to to get a new following is just to turn kids onto something that that they didn't know really existed. Exactly. So there'll be two, there'll be two shows end of June and, and mid July. We'll be playing two Cape Town shows, which will be for all ages. So it's it'll be interesting to check that out and see if we can we can expand the. The alternative base a little bit. Oh, you most definitely will. Again, kids are the ones that are your fans. Uh, you, to me, when it comes to music, you're looking at 14 pretty much to 23, 24. They're the ones that are spending the money um, mm -hmm. buying the music. Obviously, when you're playing at a place where you have to be a certain age to get in, that's, that's the base in that, in that area. But again, the kids have always been the ones that support music, keep it going. Uh, anything new in music, the kids are the ones that, that jump on it first and make it popular. So we have no doubt that once you start getting this to a younger audience and fan group, they're going to jump on board really hard. Um, and we, 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 we are always, I mean, we probably shouldn't be, but we, we're always surprised when we play shows, when, you know, when people see you live, they get a whole different perspective of the band. You know, they can chat with you afterwards. Um, and you know, just we just always surprised that people always buy T-shirts and CDs. We kind of expect people just to download it, be it legally or otherwise. But you know, just to come around, buy the CD, and ask you to autograph it and have a chat with you—that's you know, that that personal relationship you build up with the with the supporters. It's it's very important. It really. Yeah, and we're also trying. We're also trying to sort of cultivate um, a alternative scene, especially in Cape Town, because when I was like a youngster. Um, there was a lot of things to do in Cape Town and there was a big golf scene and there was a, a punk scene and these things don't exist anymore so it would be cool to sort of try and, and uh, get an alternative scene more active in, in especially in South Africa and in Cape Town. Re reignited a bit. Yes. You know, well that's just playing more all ages shows I think would do something like that. Um, again, to have a scene, you have to be able to make sure everyone can get to it. And once you limit that to a certain age group and lock the young kids out, they'll go somewhere else because they have nowhere else to go. So I really think, yeah, these all-ages shows will open you guys up to an extremely wider market. And again, cream rises to the top, so when you're good, people are going to find it and love it. Um, and you guys are good, so I don't think you're going to have any issues there. Now here's something we do. We have a little game usually we do for live interviews, but I've started doing this with web reviews and it's turned out somewhat fun. We have a game we call Roll the Bones. I have a 20-sided dice here. I have 20 questions that are pre-selected. <laughs> I think three or four have to do with music. Um, needless to say, <laughs> the rest are pretty much out there. But what I can say, if you choose to play, I play as well, so I'd never have you roll when I don't roll. If you're up for it, great. If not... We don't Absolutely. take it personally. Well, since you're here, we could do one of two things. I could either roll for you, or you guys could pick a number between 1 and 19, because 20 is my magical question called blow, and you're not there, and blow is I pull out a breathalyzer, and we see if you're fucked up or not. So um, we, can't do, we can't do number 20, so you guys choose. Do you want to just pick a number or have me roll? Um, I'll pick my lucky number, number 9. Number 9 is religion, yes or no? Oh, that's a good one. Oh, no. I would say no. no. Okay, there you go. I, I feel the same way. I believe in things, but religion, uh, I, I have my personal yeah. things, and that's not it. Your turn. You want to roll, or do you want me to roll, or pick a number? I'll go for eight. Eight. One of my favorites. What drew you to your instrument? Sure, okay, well... I can't play anything, um, so I guess. No, yes, you can. <laughs> I was just, uh, yeah, I just used to sing since I was a child. So I, I love using my voice. I love making sounds and making funny noises, and um, yeah, I just loved singing all my life. It's it's been something that I've been doing since I was really small. So it sort of just came naturally to um, to stand on a stage and to like. <laughs> now, um, I actually, I actually started out. As a drummer, um, in the I, I started playing drums just because I was yeah I I just had beats out. Out just like the beat thing <laughs> that that'll work. So we yeah so initially I started playing drums and then I 
I had two, I had these songs in my head that I needed to get out, and I couldn't do it just with drums. So um, I was in a band, uh, VOD, um, uh, since the late 80s. And here in the sort of mid-90s, we toured Europe, and then I bought myself a bass guitar because I thought that would be the easiest way just to get a couple of notes out. I don't need to get my head wrapped around a guitar. So, so I started with bass guitar, and then that just progressed to guitars. Yeah. There I just, you go. I, I, I don't have a preference now. I just like to... I, anything that I could get a song out of would be good, good enough for me now. Okay. Sorry, that's, that's probably long-winded, but yeah. Nah, but it's... But it tells, but it tells the story. So you, you know, that's the most important thing. Now I pick a number, but I know what they all are, and then I just go for ratings. So I can't do that. But somehow we all stayed in the same group because I rolled a ten. So we just went eight, nine, ten today. Okay. Okay. And today's question is the right to own guns. And well, I live in America, and I'm going with fuck yes. Um, Absolutely. Because I got a whole shitload of them, and my whole thing is. I ain't shooting it if it's alive, because if I kill it, I got to eat it. I don't want it, and I'm not into skinning and doing that. But I do blow up a whole bunch of cool things out in the desert, and if you break in the house, if the dogs don't get you, I'm going to. But that's enough for that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, we, we, I'm also like, a, um, I definitely believe that you, you do have the right to protect yourself, and you do have the right to own a gun. In South Africa, unfortunately, we have a situation where the responsible people are being sort of penalized for... It's very difficult to purchase or to get a license, um, but, you know, weapons get stolen and used for crime all the time. So, well, you know, it's one of those situations. Crossbows are, are, are pretty much legal everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I know I have a couple of those, so... I mean, I, I, I do think there should be... Uh, serious regulations attached to it. Whereas, I, mean, I know in some of your states, you can just go to a, 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 a like a, a, f a gun fair and just pick up a submachine gun, and that's no, that's I mean, that's a bit crazy. Just with you know, just anyone can stroll in there and just go to another state and cause havoc. That's that's a bit disturbing in many ways. You know, if if it's if if someone is psychologically sound and they they. They've taken at least a theoretical test and a small practical test. You know, you can't just shove a gun in someone. It's, I'm fine. Everyone says it's it's a tool, but it's not like it's a like it's a, a bandsaw or something. You know, that thing can well even can a, really cool. I mean, a, a screwdriver could kill you if you don't know how to use it. So, so I mean, I'm a. If, if someone wants to harm someone, they can use a car. They can use a hammer. They can use a rock or a stick. But. Um, it's just the, 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 the extent to which you can, if you have a, a magazine that takes 50 rounds and you walk into a Batman movie and start spraying it at the audience. Well, you, you know, yeah. you're right, and, I, and I'm a firm believer in that too. There should be background checks. Any fool shouldn't have a weapon. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm also the, a person that owns very large clips themselves. I mean, you know, if I go out in the desert and I do have actually a, a, a submachine gun, I like to shoot doors in half. I'm not trying to shoot people, but I will shoot a door in half because I can do that and it's fun. Um, again, responsible people you don't have to worry about, but again, yeah. you know, I've always said I could, you know, it'd be it a gun stick, whatever. Anyone could cause cause harm with something. It's just being responsible. And again, if you have nothing to hide, there's nothing wrong with the background check. Exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I have no problem buying a weapon and not picking it up for a couple days because they need to make sure I'm not nuts. If I have to have it that desperately right this second, that would be a red flag right there. Going, well, why does he need it right now? Who's he going after? So, so I definitely believe that. But I also believe, unfortunately, the world's full of crazy people. And if you don't have a way to protect yourself, you know, I, I guess what's the slogan they always have on bumper stickers here? When you outlaw guns, only outlaws will have guns. Um, but you see, that's the problem. Yeah, that's what happens. It's a conundrum, and it's a long, yeah, it's, it's a never-ending debate that will, yeah, it'll, it'll always be a, a contentious issue, and, but, you know, it's, as, you, you can't just hand them. Oh! That's just one of those. <laughs> well, it looks like we're getting into one of those little Skype windows where we just might freeze up, because I think you guys did. We're back in South Africa with the amazing world of technology. You could talk to people from around the world, and you could lose them just like that. 
but we got them back um, just in time to end this thing. So we played a little bit of Roll of the Bones. We found a great deal about this amazing band from a part of the world probably most of us aren't getting to anytime soon, though I would like to. Um, hint, hint, Virgin. Um, because we're working on a little deal trying to get some flights it, it is from a great them. Place. It is a great place to come to. I mean, if each country has its flaws, but yeah. But please, when you come to South Africa, you have to come to Cape Town. Don't just go to Johannesburg. Yeah, Johannesburg is a bit depressing sometimes. Cape Town's the best place to come. So there you go. If you're going to South Africa, the party's in Cape Town. Absolutely. And the tourists go to Johannesburg. So, don't... So, it's fantastic people in Johannesburg, but we have the ocean down here, so yeah. Watch. And the mountains. And places that we could see you guys play live. So there you go. That makes it all a win-win-win situation. <laughs> but I think we're going to wrap this up before we lose you again, because I know my internet signal's good, and like that it could be crap too. So I guess for myself, Buzz TV, South Africa, the band Terminatrix, we're out of here, guys. See ya. Thanks, sir. Bye. Bye. <laughs>